Good afternoon, members of the Senior Services Committee, and welcome to this meeting of the uh, Senior Services Committee of the City of Clovis. We would like to call to order, or I would like to call us to order, and begin with the roll call, please, Ms. Reagan. Mayor Morris. Here. Donna Labatt. Here. Melinda Coslett. Here. Constance Williams. Here. Shelley Wynn. Here. Terry Potter. Here. Baxter Curran, representative. Here. Miss Linda Lawson. La Casa Senior Center is absent. And Friendship Senior Center is absent. Very well. Thank you for that. Next, we have, um, and I believe we have established, we do have a quorum, so we can take up the next item, which is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting, which took place May 12th. Members, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes, and do you recommend uh, changes or additions, or is there a motion to approve? I uh, move that we approve them as presented. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion for approval from Member Coslett. I'll second. And second from Member Wynn. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The motion is carried and we have approved the minutes from the May 12th meeting. Next section in the agenda is old business and there we have one item and it, and it is update regarding art and public places. Uh, Ms. Riggin, or did, did, did we want to cover that today yes. under old business? Yes, yes. If, okay. we, if we can. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Madam Chair, and members of the committee. Um, back in May, the committee met and decided to form a sub-chair sub to pick out some art for our art in public places. We have been awarded 70,679, I said that completely wrong, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, in art in public places um, funding. So we are able to go through and pick out some funding. On June the 10th, the committee met and... Um, and selected some art. Um, this morning we met with our um, Art and Public Places uh, director and, and we have established some art that we, that we can select. Of course, some of this art has been on their radar for a while, so it may, it may not be available. She is going to be getting with the artist and make sure that we can, that we can get this art. So I'd like for you to see the first piece that the group selected. This is the horny, to horny Toad Sculpture, also known as um, Rain Bear. The sun. Sun, sun Lion. Sun, sun, sun Lion. Sun Lion. Yeah. Sun Lion. As she mentioned this morning, it's not on our, um, on our screen there. This piece of art is um, valued at $30,000. And then the next slide, please. In this, in this selection get back to my notes um, these are pastels and each each piece of art is one thousand seven hundred dollars for a total of five thousand one hundred dollars this is one of the selections that they are unsure if we can still secure um, with this funding okay and then the next slide this one is also um, some photographs of, of northern uh, New Mexico skies with some thunder and lightning, and then the very bottom one is a train. Each one, of, or these, these three images are valued at $21,000. Okay, and then the next slide. These two are both mosaic pieces. The, the tree, the cottonwood tree, is valued at $2,000. And then the birds, um, labeled as freedom, is valued at $1,100. Okay, and then the next piece. Um, these are um, some High Plains Drifters and Bronze Bunnies. These are also two pieces that we are un unsure if we'll be able to secure at this time. Did you have a question, I Ms. Wynn? I thought she didn't question those. I thought it, the only, yeah. I was just, okay. the, just the pastels. pastels. I think it's, that, that's just okay. Just the pastels, yeah. Because I was like, no, the bunnies. <laughs> no, just the pastels. And the take my they mentioned these bunnies would be put onto a, onto a pedestal with some plexiglass around them. And um, very cute little bunnies. And then the next slide. 
This is the bison in grass. This is a watercolor and it's valued at $1,476. And so this is, this is some of the art that, um, that we were able to select and, and hopefully put in place for our new senior center. The, the process itself takes about a year from the time that we select it until um, the artist is able to come and, and install everything. Of course, with the construction of the new senior center not has not begun yet, um, we do have plenty of time. And um, she also stated that she may be able to extend um, our time frame just a little bit to, to be able to secure this art. With that, I stand for any questions. Any other comments from members of that subcommittee yes. you'd like to share? I would just like it to be reflected in the minutes that our thinking in selecting these different art pieces was to come up with art that was reflective of the area and the history and the culture of the Clovis and the Eastern New Mexico area. So that's how we came to select these particular items. I uh, also want to mention that the cost of installing these items is within the cost of the items as projected. So we, do, we will have some responsibility for maintenance later on, but there is a five-year warranty for these items. So that down the road, we need to figure out about maintenance for these items, but that's all part of it right now. So. Thank you. Pre appreciate that explanation. And I think uh, for, for my benefit and, and for anyone's, uh, anyone from the public's benefit who may be tracking, remind us the, the source of the $70,000 that the city has to spend on the art. This, this is from the New Mexico Arts, Art and Public Places program. Okay. Each time that um, an eligible grant has been awarded, 1% of that grant funding is set to the side specifically for art in public places. Um, so when we, when we first began with the um, construction or with the plan and design back in 2016, we were awarded the first um, $2,500. And then when we received funding from the for the construction of the facility, um, we were awarded another $47,039. And then as well as when um, we were able to secure some additional funding through legislation this, this past legislative year with our governor, um, we were uh, awarded the additional $7,500 and $13,640 for a total of $70,679.46. Thank you for that explanation. I think it's important for the public uh, to understand that the, the, the money being spent on this art, uh, this wonderful art that, that, will, um, that will make the senior center uh, all the more special of a place, but it's important for the public to understand that that money is not coming from the city budget, that that's grant funding that, that we were able to, to receive. So thank you for that. Any other comments on the art in public places? Yes, yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to um, add, if we could go back to the toad uh, or the sun lion. Um, today, whenever we were discussing the installation of that, we just wanted to make sure that um, we're able to get these pictures to the landscape um, people who will be working on the outside because we really want to try to ensure, like we were thinking about this being at the entrance area and trying to make sure that this style, the Southwest style is incorporated into that area on the entrance and so. Oh, great point. Yeah, we would want to make sure there's consideration given for <coughs> incorporating that piece of art in, in what's done with the landscape. Natural environment. Yeah, yeah. it's natural <laughs> environment, yes. And, and the dimensions on that, uh, it's over six foot long. It's rather that's, big. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's yeah, that's a. But I love that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice piece of art. Uh, any other comments or anything else to share on art in public places? I I just want to thank the subcommittee that that got together and devoted their time to look over this. There were numerous pieces of art to select from, and so I just wanted to thank you all for for your time and effort to get this in place. Thank you. There is one additional comment I'd like to add, and that is in our thinking in selecting this art is we wanted art that would be viable for many years to come. We did not want something that was so 
connected with current time that in 20 years people would say, who the heck selected this and why? So we wanted something that could stand the test of time, some artwork that was cl classic. Well, I think you did well on that. Thank you. Good job. Thank you to the subcommittee. Do we need to take action on uh, approving the recommendations? I don't believe we do, do we? Okay, very well. Great. Well, then we will move on to section five, which is reports. And we would love to hear from our uh, committee members. And we can go in order there. Um, senior services. Uh, so one, I guess the first thing that I would like to report on is our um, pilot program. We have a transportation service that's running between Clovis and Portales to assist some of our dialysis patients um, to their medical appointments. Uh, we are currently trying to get that, that program off the ground. And um, we have done several trips and working with La Casa Senior Center in Portales, they are able to get, right now we are transporting four seniors. Um, so they're able to get those seniors to La Casa Senior Center. We pick them up, we take them to dialysis after four hours, pick them up and return them to their homes. And so we have had lots of um, interest in that and it is a very, very much needed program. So we're hoping that this is up and running and, and just growing, continuing to grow. I would also like to mention our, um, in August, on August the 20th, we will be holding our Old Timers Day celebration. We are working with the Curry County Event Center, and they are gracious enough to um, provide a venue. They also provide food and entertainment. This year, we are having brisket, potato salad, beans, lots of fun. We also do awards for the oldest, or I say eldest, um, pioneer woman and man and then the eldest pioneer woman and man who has lived in Curry County the longest. It free entry into the fair between 10 and 2 that day, and we'll be doing door prizes and awards and just lots of fun stuff. So I encourage anybody who is over the age of 50 to come out and, and participate and hang out with us. We have not been able to hold it for the last two years, and so we are very excited. Last year was the 100th year of Curry County, fair and we we missed out on that one because we were still kind of trying to get over over the pandemic so we are excited to be able to do that this year and so that is all that i would like to talk about for senior services when friendship rolls around i'm going to kind of fill you in on a couple of things from there sounds good we look forward to hearing more from you then what did you call the event uh on august 20th old time old timers day celebration old timers day celebration okay and that coincides in, with fair activities? Yes, okay. it's the Saturday, the last Saturday of the fair. A couple of years ago, 2019, our eldest um, lady was 106 years old, and we have since lost her, but she, oh. she was there every year, so excited to, to get that award because she, she was, I think she got it two or three years in a, war, in a row. Um, so we're encouraging our seniors to come on out. Great, thanks for sharing that. All right, um, Ms. Lawson, would you like to share with us about the activities at Baxter Curran? Okay, uh, this month we're really full up, but uh, nothing outstanding. We do have our uh, band on the third Friday of the month for the dance. Uh, our chat and chew will be meeting at Vera Cruz there at 14th and Main. Uh, that's this Saturday. Uh, we are going to have uh, a family feud and chicken salad on the last Saturday, which is the 30th. We're still working on the Charleston trip. We've got a full bus. There's about 40, 42, 43 people signed up for it, ready to go. And we're going to work on a trip for uh, Branson in December. When you say Charleston, Charleston where? South Carolina. Oh, great. Outstanding. And so you, you've chartered a bus and yes. seniors from Dim here are traveling to Charleston? Diamond Tours will be picking us up at Baxter Current, and we will load out and just take a wonderful, it's uh, 11 days, 10 nights, and 
They've got a lot of things to look at, to take us through. It's always good. Wonderful. It sounds mm -hmm. like great Just things nice. going on. You, did, did you say uh, one of the upcoming events, you called it Family Feud? Uh-huh. What can you share with us about that? Okay. <laughs> Last month was the first time we tried it, and we had a fair turnout. It wasn't great, it was fun. but it was a lot of fun. Uh, the activity, if you've ever watched it on TV, you know people say the craziest things. So, so it is, it, you're, you're playing the game that we all kind of uh -huh. know from TV, okay? Correct. And let me I tell see. you, when you're on the spot, your <laughs> mind goes blank. <laughs> I play it really well when I'm sitting in my chair <laughs> watching TV. But. Well, that sounds like great fun. Uh, thanks for letting us know about some of the things going on over at Baxter Curran. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Uh, next, would we have an update from La Casa? Yeah, wonderful. Good to see you this afternoon, sir. Yeah, well, my uh, my other crew is uh, in Hobbs. They took a field trip, okay, and uh, a bunch of them took off and decided they were going to go up there. And I guess they went to the casino. Hopefully, they'll come back with a little more money than they left with. We'll see. <laughs> well, we'll cross our fingers for but them. They're having a good time over there. Just a clarification from the minutes uh, we we reported, or I advised, the that transportation was for medical purposes only. But I want to clarify that that transportation is the one between Clovis and Portales. The transportation services we provide in both communities is for just about anything, shopping, paying bills, getting out of the house, doing whatever they need to do, we provide that transportation. So, oh, great. But between Clovis and Portales, when we have to transport here and there, it's just for medical purposes only. In fact, today I got a call from a 75-year-old veteran who said he's desperate, needed a ride because uh, he needed foot surgery. And so we arranged for Randy to pick him up. He's our Portales driver. He's going to drive him to Clovis because we don't have a bus here. And then he's going to pick him up and take him back home after he's done with his foot surgery. And I, it was amazing. I guess he was so thankful. And when, he, when he asked me how much, I said, well, there's no cost if you're a senior. And uh, he, he, oh, he burst up in tears. He just couldn't oh, believe wow. it. So I guess he's a lonely individual by himself, nobody to help him. So we're glad we're there for that purpose. So then... Go ahead. Oh, well, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so the the very same pilot program that Ms. Riggin is talking about is the transportation for medical purposes between the two cities? Is Actually, that right? no. We, ours or is separate, but we, separate. we do work okay. together. In this case, I knew it was a short notice. There was no way I was going to be able to get a hold of Barbara and make it happen okay. with, with their transport. And so with uh, with the uh, Friendship Center or the Clovis Senior Center. Senior service services transport so what we did is I just told Randy just bring him up here wait for him and take him back home Very that good. way we can we can take care of the gentleman and so when I called the the gentleman back he was just he just broke down I guess I could tell that he was kind of alone and and uh, needed that kind of support today wow well, where he needed well, to be. thanks so, we're glad we were there to be able to do that yeah and to let you know we're getting very provide. very active on lots of other things I guess our some of our seniors went to senior olympics and came back all fired up and they're buying <laughs> They're buying cornhole sets, they're buying shuffleboards, they're buying uh, all kinds of, uh, let's see, frisbees and uh, what else? Shuff uh, shuffleboard, air rifle, air pistol, and they're getting ready for Senior Olympics next year. So they want to go out there and compete and do a good job and have fun. So hopefully we'll have a better crowd back in Las Cruces. I, I went and it was hot, <laughs> too hot. I don't know why they have it in Cruces. They need to have it somewhere up in the mountains where... Yeah. <laughs> it's nice and cool. Um, just to let you know, also, we have a 50s dance coming up on the 17th from 1 to 4. Cost is $5. Uh, you just, that's to help pay the band, and there's going to be a potluck-style meal with the center providing pinto beans, red chile, chile and sopaipilla. So come on out and have some fun, eat, and what time get your exercise. It's from 1 to 4 on Sunday the 17th, this Sunday. And our July luncheon fundraiser is Thursday the 21st. They're having taco salad and bizcochitos for $5 a plate. Call-in orders are welcome. You can come in, take out, and go home and eat. And uh, they have been selling out, so you want to get your orders in quick if you want to go out and eat. Barbara goes quite often, and mm -hmm. it's always good, isn't it? Yes, always. <laughs> always good. So come on by and, and join us there, and that's all I have. Great. Well, thank you for that. Any, any questions for uh, La Casa? No. Thank you for that report. Appreciate that very much. Uh, next, could we hear an update on Curry Resident Senior Meals Association? 
we don't have no they are not okay. they are not here today um, I do have totals for um, the month of June okay. um, if I may in the congregate setting they served 236 seniors with a total of 1571 meals and 154 seniors that were homebound for a total of 4,845 mills. The homebound seniors, some of them qualify for a weekend mill. So on Fridays, there are times that they have um, taken a uh, frozen mill, two frozen mills for the weekend. And if you're, if you need information about the about the mill site, you can call. Um, 575-762-9405 and they can assist you. Thank you for that. How many homebound did you say? 154. 154. Okay. For four, almost 5,000 meals. Right. It's incredible. Right. It's incredible the, the number of meals they're providing. Thanks for sharing that. I'm glad they sent that info with you. Oh, one point of clarification. What does a meal cost now at Crisman? Six. It it is a suggested four dollar donation. Four dollar donation. It was three. I thought it went up to fourteen twenty six. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Very good. Um, how about uh, fifty plus Olympics? Um, well, I can attest. Liz called me from La Casa wanting information about air guns, and so I gave her Bill Adams' phone number so she could talk to him because he's the expert on our air gun section. I don't do anything with that. Um, that's not my thing. Um, but they are real excited, and we're real excited. We took a hiatus for the month of July, so we're not meeting. But we are, we'll meet again in August, and we are hoping to get together and start planning some fun days. We'll do a, a fun day of, of just shuffleboard where it's not a workshop or anything. It's just come out and play if you want to play. Same thing with cornhole. Um, I'm planning on putting on a semi-kind of pickleball workshop for people who just don't know what it is and might want to learn how to play it. So that's in the works. Um, but we just kind of took the month of July off because we were kind of exhausted from everything else, from just things that we had to do, business things we had to get done. Um, but we, we, we are pl really planning on trying to do a lot more fun days. Okay, Melinda? I'd like to have some kind of instruction about air rifles and air pistols. Okay, as soon as Bill has been under the weather, as soon as he's up and well, that is one of the things that's on our agenda. Well, you could do it, couldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, but we're waiting for the new center to open. Oh, that's <clears throat> that's the long pole in the tent here, huh? Are you referring to the yeah. shooting range? Yes. Yes, okay. Because yeah. where we had to shoot before, mine is no longer available because I moved. Okay. And that, so we were kind of, that's, we're kind of waiting on that so we can have some activities out there. Mm -hmm. It well, has to be, you got to have enough room. Right, right. Well, all very interesting stuff, and, and I, I think that facility is getting close to being open, so uh, hopefully you can have that soon. Uh, Ms. Coslett, when you mm -hmm. talk about a fun day with shuffleboard and perhaps a, a instruction on pickleball and uh -huh. all those kinds of things, where, where do you hold that? Uh, Roy Walker. Roy Walker. Is probably where it will be. Yeah. Yeah, it's, gotcha. only, it's the only facility that we have mm -hmm. that we can use, which will mean we'll have to coordinate our dates, of course, with Russell and, mm -hmm. and, and the... And the um, Mr. Curry at Roy Walker, but he's he's been real agreeable to doing that kind of stuff. So good, good, glad to hear that. And we, and we only use we're able to use um, the South Gym, so it doesn't block the North Gym from being used by basketball players and stuff like that. They mm -hmm. for some reason they prefer that gym anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the stuff we do, we this year we were able to move it to the South Gym. So mm -hmm. I know I was over there one day for the ribbon cutting. Uh -huh. And uh, got to got to play shuffleboard as it was set up in the south. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you for that. Thanks for that report. A anything else, Miss Coslett? No, I'm Any sorry. Okay, no. very good. Sorry. All right. Um, uh, retired seniors volunteer program or foster grandparent program? Mm -hmm. Any anyone that would share we on that? We just had a meeting Tuesday. Okay. And there wasn't a lot going on. They're, they're really looking for foster grandparents. Mm -hmm. They are short, what, they lost four for varying reasons. And they need at least nine in the program. Mm -hmm. And 
Melrose is going to let them back in when school starts. And they're especially looking for some uh, Spanish-speaking foster grandparents because they have a couple of families that have moved to Melrose that the children, their main language is Spanish. And they're wanting someone that can help them. I see. Well, thanks you know, for sharing that. Texaco still hasn't said if they're going to open up for foster grandparents yet. And the foster grandparent program, is that is that sponsored by the county or who? Yeah, RSVP is county. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's sponsored by the county. And when you talk about going into the schools just for everyone's benefit and reminder for me, but foster grandparents, uh, it's a program where, where seniors can volunteer in the schools and do some reading and things like that with, with yeah, kids they at assist, school. Yeah, they assist the, the kids with either whatever, you know, in the classroom with the teachers. Mm -hmm. They can't take over a classroom right. or stay. There has to be a teacher or a, um, I don't know what they call that. Educational the, aid. Assistant or yeah, the assistants in that. Right. They can't be in the room by themselves. Right. They're, they're a volunteer going into the, yeah. that school, they, so therefore the all those rules apply. They, with everything that's gone on, they were trying to get them so that, you know, could they stay in the classroom and watch the class? Mm -hmm. And that was one thing that's really they're really strict about. They can't be in there by themselves. Right. But Got it. yeah, they're looking for foster grandparents. Um, a lot of the other programs are doing pretty good right now, from what she said. Talk about the buddy phone call, because that's still going pretty the strong. The what? Buddy phone calls? Do you know about the buddy phone calls? I hadn't heard him. I know Susan makes calls to people well, occasionally. There's a group of us that have a list of names. It started back as a one month program only. It was kind of a um, like a pilot program. And some of us asked once, because once you'd done it for a month, you kind of formed a bond with, at least I had with the people that I was calling. So I asked if I could continue calling them, even if they didn't have a program. And so I have been, but then they now have an actual program um, set up. I don't, I don't it's a, on some kind of a grant. Um, and so we all have a list and we just, it's just a buddy well check. You call once a week and say, hey, how you doing? What's going on? And Who are you calling? Another grandparent or a child? Yeah. Oh, these, these are people that have either, their names have either been submitted by um, interim or places like that, or a friend has suggested that maybe this person might appreciate a phone call. I know when I, I first. the person? Are you talking about an elderly person? Yeah, an elderly person. person. Yeah, it's, it's a well health check for elderly people. Um, one of the people that I call each week is a widow who is um, legally blind, lives by herself. And so I call her on Sundays because she has health care in and out during the week but never talks to anybody hardly on the weekend. So I switched my day to call her to the weekend so she would have at least one human contact, as she said, besides the television. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you for, uh, for sharing on Oh, what you knew it. about those programs, I'm sure. Is there a, a, any kind of a stipend associated with the foster grandparent program? Yes. A, a small one? Just a very small one. No, I th I think it's, they gone up? no, they haven't gone up. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That's part okay. of the problem. They haven't gone three, up. I thought it was $3 yeah. an hour. And they're, for RSVP, the volunteers that do stuff and s submit their time and that to RSVP, they can get mileage, which I think is 14 and a half cents, which is the charity if you were doing your taxes that's the amount for charity ours for our uh, tax aid people we submit ours to aarp because we get the going rate the business rate mm -hmm. which just went up as of july 1 to 62 and a half cents a mile Ooh. i want to say that um AmeriCorps is the federal program that allows for the foster grandparent program that the county then gets grants from. Yeah. I think that's right. I remember that Yeah, it's that all kind of combined together. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. Well, well, very good. Thanks for sharing with us what you could on, on uh, foster grandparents and um, appreciated that member Kozlet to just be aware of the, the, you called that a buddy call yeah. program. Uh, that's very, very nice. That's Thank you. Is that no, it's, it has nothing to do with foster grandparents. Just, just, just through RSVP. RSVP. Through RSVP. It is through RSVP, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. I turn in a, a sheet every month um, of a, a record of who, you know, the, I, I record the phone number, who, the, who I called, how long I talked to them, how, what can, you know, it just says fair, good, you know, how, how were they when I talked to them. And I turn that in monthly. 
How does a person get on that list? I'm thinking um, of David Braseno's patient here a moment ago. Well, I don't know if we have any in Fortalis or not. To, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying we couldn't. I mean, I actually still call one who's moved to Florida, and I still call her because she likes to hear the Clovis gossip. <laughs> So she's asked me to keep calling her, even though she lives in, in Clovis, I mean, in, in Florida now. Um, but um, they, could call, they could call Susan at RSVP and, and suggest a name and say, hey, you know, I've got a name here. We'd like to add them to our list or to your calling list. Um, what I'm thinking, Barbara, is to have a list available or make this known available at the Friendship Center because people who go there may know of people who need to have these kinds of calls, oh, especially the people in the, in the uh, meal delivery program. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I, I complete, completely agree. We Daily, we have seniors who are calling just to talk, you know, just because they just <laughs> need somebody to talk to. They're, they're all alone. And so I, I wrote that down, and I'm definitely going to get with um, Nisi, I believe is her name, from right. RSVP, yes. and see if I can get more information okay. about that. On the flip side of that, that means we need more people to volunteer to make the phone calls. <laughs> right. well, there may be some of the people there at the Friendship Center who come regularly who would be willing to do some of that. Yes. Maybe. I don't know how many of us are still calling, to be real honest. I don't know how many still, still are doing it, but it, it will take that side of it, too, if, yeah. you, if you greatly add to the list. Because four or five is about all one person can handle when you're calling them weekly and some of them talk yes. 45 minutes, you know, which I'm not, which is fine, but you can't do that with when you have a list of 20. <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, it's a great opportunity for seniors to connect, so I'm glad we discussed that and, and we can um, make an effort to connect seniors to this program. So thank you. Well, next we'll move on then to For the Good of the Order, and uh, we have a communication there um, to hear from Ms. Riggin. Right. Miss Purves. <laughs> it's got my name on it. It does have your name <laughs> on it. There would be. <laughs> <laughs> so before before I um, talk about that, I would we didn't get Friendship Senior Center on this list oh, because gosh, I'm I sorry. was actually supposed to probably talk about that under Senior Services since they're kind of under my. Um, under my umbrella. Yeah. Um, but I would like to mention a couple of things about what things are happening at Friendship Senior Center. Um, the first Thursday of the month, we're doing a cup of joe, which is um, s just sitting and visiting with some of our veterans, um, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, we are we're trying to have more and more informational um, presentations, such as Major Medical, Humana, Kindred, um, SNAP Benefits, um, Immersh, so there are lots of lots of different presentations that are available. Um, in the month of August is going to be come and chill with us. We're having Wednesday afternoon movies, and so we'll be watching Frozen, Snow Dogs, To Go, Tago. I'm not sure if I pronounce that right, and Ice Age. Um, and I think probably one of the most exciting things that we're going to be starting in August is an aquatic class. And so so starting on the 16th of August, we will have limited limited sign up. I believe we have 12 spots of, available right now. Actually, I'm, I take that back. We probably have two spots left, but we're going to start the classes with just 12 participants, and then we may be adding an additional class. Um, so we'll be meeting out at the Aquatic Center and, and just kind of staying in the shallow end of the pool and just doing some stretches and, and some uh, aquatic stuff there. Um, we are all, we, lots of fun stuff, y'all. We're fixing to play indoor volleyball on the 8th, 1 o'clock. So it's so much fun. We sit in little six on one side and six on the other, and the table is our net, and we're playing with a beach ball. Mm -hmm. So indoor volleyball, um, as well as we're having a Nerf war. Mm -hmm. nice. okay, we have Nerf <laughs> guns. And I have on here, prepare to battle. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm not in charge of that. <laughs> I stay in my office where it's safe. Um, and then on top of that, we have different things. We have, um, we're going to be going to eastern New Mexico to tour the museum. Um, Sandy and Betty are taking some, uh, a group of seniors out to tootle to the fair to see some of the fair animals. Um, they're going to be going downtown. Um, we're just every day trying to do something different. 
So you can find our list of activities on the City of Clovis website or on Facebook page under the City of Clovis Senior Center. Um, and then lastly, um, we also are very fortunate to have Miss Williams. She is the constituents representative. Uh, Did yes. I say that correctly? Yes, ma'am. Um, she comes the last Tuesday of every month. And Constance, can you just kind of tell us how many seniors you've been able to help with your program? Yes, um, thank you, Barbara. Um, so basically the last Tuesday of the month, um, I hold tabling services at uh, Friendship and uh, basically have um, information about, you know, right now federal agency, Social Security. Um, I want to get some more handouts, but um, I have um, our constituent services flyer, which is basically information that we can hand out to constituents about what's going on um, with regards to services that our office offers and then um, you know kind of talk with them about different needs that they may have and I've opened up a few different cases I actually um, before I came here went by an individual's house to pick up their paperwork so we could follow up with their VA benefits um, because uh, basically they need um, house remodeling and there are some VA programs that you know can help remodel a house for a veteran who is disabled and so I'm going to be working on that and a couple of different cases with like rent help assistance uh, trying to get um, people who had applied and being able to follow up and they've been awarded their awards and um, so it's been helpful and uh, basically we try to do anything um, to help people except for uh, with regards to legal services we can't deal with anything legal because it's separation of powers but um, we'll definitely refer to legal aid or anything of that nature. But within our um, abilities, we try to help people do anything. Okay. So now I'm going to go into my exciting communication. Uh, we, were, we were very fortunate and, and honored to have um, our governor, Lujan Grisham, visit with us last Friday. Um, she came out to the, the site of the new senior center, and um, she was very excited about programs that we are going to be able to get started. And, and she has said that she's going to have funding for seniors and for senior programs. And so, um, so we are very excited to look into some of those things that she mentioned. Um, hopefully in the near future, when we do have groundbreaking for our, for our new senior center, we will be able to have the governor back and, and be there present with us during that time if things work out as they are planned. Anything else you'd like to add, Ms. Claire? Um, yes, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro... Oh, we're not a commission meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, members of the Senior Services Committee. Um, one of the things uh, with regard to the Senior Centre, I just want to let you know, uh, we are planning on bringing um, the uh, bid recommendation uh, to the commission at their meeting next Thursday evening. Um, we had the uh, bid opening and a company by the name of EPX Construction Partners. Uh, they received the... Uh, the lowest bid, and we they actually came over bid, uh, $475,000 over bid, even the most recent bid. So um, we asked them to uh, <coughs> to do some value engineering with NCA Architects, uh, who are your, who are working for the city on this project. So um, the they and when we met with them on Tuesday, they made some recommendations to reduce that by 475,000 and what that included was deleting all the stone veneer and the rigid insulation. Um, they were swapping out some exterior insulation and finish systems with some uh, lighter than traditional stucco. Um, the, they're changing around some, the, well they're deleting the tongue and groove throughout the building and um, stainless bollards are gonna re uh, re um, replace them with painted steel bollards. Um, they are currently deleting the landscaping at $120,000. But what we're hoping, um, one of the things that they were asked to do was to remove the tile um, in all the areas except for the dining area, correct? And look at putting concrete, just having that, you know, that stamped concrete in there instead. And so we're hoping that that, when, they, when we have the results back for that, that cost, we'll be able to uh, add the landscaping back in again. Um, so uh, that'll be coming to the commission next week. Uh, we're working on the CDBG grant to get the approval from the state to move forward. So we're hoping to be able to get going middle of August. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. And thank you again, Ms. Riggin. Appreciate you sharing with us on those things. 
Um, anything else for the good of the order? Well, there any chance since Governor Lujan Grisham was so supportive of the senior center that we had and so supportive and knowledgeable of her activities with seniors that she might be able to cough up some more money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, you never know you unless know, you ask. Yeah, that's true. I guess you never know unless you ask. But uh, I think we need to to get this senior center under construction before inflation gets us worse, you know, and uh, and so I just appreciate the work that the um, the construction company and architects are doing to value engineer it and 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 yeah, you can always go ask ask for more. Um, the governor, uh, you know, was asked for more just months ago and 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 gave the project another 1.5 million, uh, you know, so um, you know, it's an interesting question that you bring up. But, you know, how, how many times do you go back and ask? Uh, as many times as you dare. <laughs> <laughs> well, ma'am, yeah. ma'am, yeah. members of the Senior Services Committee, I mean, we still need $600,000 for all of the equipment, correct, for the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we may be having to be going back for a capital outlay for that. Um, excuse me, Claire, have y'all um, submitted for anything like from the federal government or looked to see um, whether or not there would be something in that realm for senior, s senior sites or anything of that nature? Um, Mayor, members of the committee, uh, um, Ms. Williams, I have not seen anything okay. on the senior side available at this time. Let me, what I'll do is I'll send an email um, just kind of in this realm to Lisa Van Theme to see, you know, what, because uh, you're saying we still need equipment you're saying yes okay um so i'll follow up with the email to y'all to see and like i said let's try to do a, a grant search request on some of this stuff to see if there's any you know ancillary stuff we can help thank with. you very much thank you miss williams appreciate that offer and, and any help you can find us anything else for the good of the order one other little thing i just popped into my head you have so many marvelous programs going on barbara is there any plan for a disc golf event Actually, this past month, um, Sandy took a group out to Ned Houck, and, and they did disc golf. Okay. And so if, if you're interested, I would just suggest to stop by the center and, and just put a bug in her ear. Um, Sandy Perret and Betty Bowens are both over the programs, and so they, they are the ones who are scheduling those activities. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that. All right, this committee will meet next at 1.30 p.m. on Thursday, September 8th. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.